Okay, so if you have not seen War Room, come, come up here. We're going to start at the city building at 7 o'clock, and then right after we get done praying there, and we'll probably pray at the library, and then we'll come back here and we'll watch War Room starting at 8 o'clock. Okay? So, so plan on being here for that. It's going to be awesome. Your kids, I, to me, it's a kid-friendly movie. My kids have seen it twice. And so um, I encourage you to come and be a part of that. Friday night, 8 o'clock, right here, we're going to watch War Room. It's going to be awesome. Anybody that's seen it knows it's going to be awesome, right? Amen. Well, it's a new year. Is it a new you? Well, if it's not, God's got a master plan for your life. Isn't that awesome? God has a master plan for your life. But here's the thing about... God having a master plan for your life. In order for God to have a master plan in our lives, He has to be able to use you as His tool. Right? He has to be able to form you and shape you and make you whatever He wants you to be. That's how, that's how it works. Right? It doesn't work any other way. How many need direction today? Anybody need direction in life? How many got it all figured out? Okay, good. Nobody has it all figured out today. Good. This, is, this message should be for everybody then. Okay? That's great. <coughs> Praise God. You know, through the years, we've looked for a lot of places for direction. The first one might have been this. Okay? We, you know, you, you had the compass drawn up, up top, you know, and you just kind of drew yourself a map, and that was how you found direction, right? We didn't have printing presses. You just had to kind of draw it out on that old type of paper. I don't know what that is, but, you know, that old paper that you had to draw out a map on. And then, you know, it got a little bit more sophisticated. You had a different map. And see, you could, you, you know, a little bit better drawing. We had streets. We had roads, you know. Even, a, I think that's even a roundabout there. Those are kind of new. So, you know, you kind of drew the map and, and you put the landmarks there so people could really know where they're going. You know, you've ever given somebody directions and they say, you said, yeah, it's the second oak tree on the left, right? Take a left right there, okay? And maybe you would get lost because you don't know what an oak tree is. I don't know. But, but most, most of the time we would give directions in that way, landmarks. It's kind of like when Joplin had the huge tornado down there, and it's my hometown, I went back and all the landmarks were gone. I had no idea where I was going. <laughs> it was kind of crazy. It's like, okay, this can't be 20th in Connecticut because this isn't here and this isn't here anymore. But it was. And then we kind of got a little more sophisticated and we went to something you would, you guys remember storing this in your vote box? Yeah, yeah buddy. Would it fit? That's the question. You know, and so sometimes we just had to throw it up on the dash so we wouldn't have to try to cram it in the love box every time we needed directions. And so we, we went with this. So this is kind of where we've advanced to, right? And then, then, you know, maybe that wasn't too handy. So then we, you know, they started making these nice foldable maps that will fit in your glove box. And you can just unfold them and you kind of, can kind of see the directions. And it's really nice, right? You can see exactly where you're going. Actually, I really don't like this because... Uh, my wife would be my navigator, and she just has no sense of direction whatsoever, and she'd be saying, well, here, I think we need to turn here, but I'd turn there, and then we'd, we'd turn off the wrong place, and it would take forever to get back on. But, so I'm not a big fan of maps, okay? Not a big fan. So, then we graduated a little bit more to this. Anybody know what this is? Okay, this is called a GPS. This is actually, what's sad is this is becoming a thing of the past as well, Right? Okay, this is actually old to the teenagers. They're like, a GPS, what's that? You know? <laughs> you guys know what a GPS is? Okay, okay. They, they know when it sits in the new fancy cars. They don't remember having to go to the store and just buy this little box. You know, it was like the coolest thing ever. It's sometimes. Okay, and I really wasn't a huge fan. We had a Tom Tom. We went and got this thing, and it would tell me to go the wrong direction often, and I really didn't like it a whole lot. It would tell me to take... Take a, a right where there was no right, you know? Sometimes it would do that. It, didn't, it, not, it wasn't completely flawless. And then we got to go to this, right? This is, 
This goes with us everywhere we go, right? We got it right here on our phone. This is iPhone Max. Okay, this is, to me, this is better than, better than GPS, right? Okay, I, can, I, don't, I don't have to have my GPS in my car. I don't have to have that fancy car to be able to do that. All I got to do is be able to type in an address or even start typing in what it is, and it pulls it up for me. Isn't that cool? It pulls up where I want to go. It knows where I want to go. So all of these things have been used to give us direction, right? To show us where we, how to get where we want to go, correct? But can I tell you, there's an even older tool that will do an even better job for you today. There's an even older thing that will give us the direction we really need. It's about 6,000 6, 6, plus years old, but it's really, 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 really good. Okay, half of it's 6,000 plus years old, and half of it's a little over two, about 2,000 years old. But man, I tell you what, this gives us the best directions that we could ever imagine. Okay, it, it, knocks, it knocks all these things out of the park, and we're so grateful for it, right? But how many of you know that these things give me directions as long as I follow the directions? Okay, if I say, you know what, I know that's what the map says, but I'm going to go my way. What if you came to me and you said, um, how, can you tell me how to get to Overland Park from here? And I said, well, the best way to get to Overham Park is to go west on 68 Highway till you hit 169. No. That wouldn't be the best way, would it? Okay, then just go ahead and go out here and just head up Metcalf until you get there. Is that the best way? No. What about if I said, okay, go ahead and head out east and... Just keep on going through your Highway 71. Go ahead and go up 71. Then cut back. Still not the best way, right? I'm lost. <laughs> <laughs> she would not be able to give this message. To me. <laughs> but what if I told you, okay, I want you to go right up here, get on Am Amity, or right up, I'm sorry, right back here. <laughs> get on Amity. <laughs> I'm even lost now. Um, and start heading west. You'll see 69 Highway going north. You need to get on that. Is that the best way to Oval Park? Yes. You see, we can have clear directions. Clear directions. I mean, directions that have been thought out. These guys didn't just wake up and draw a map. Right? They've been thought out. They know exactly where to go. Okay? The Spirit of God has given us clear direction. Right? The Spirit of God. I know everybody says, well, this was written by man. Yeah, it was written by man by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Right? And so this gives us clear direction. And we realize that God has a plan. God has direction for our lives. How many believe that today? I hope everybody does because it's true. So we're going to look in Scripture today. And we're going to kind of start talking about God's master plan. And this is just the beginning. Like I said, we're going to be on this for a while. But I'm looking forward to what God wants to do. But there are certain things we must do in order for His plans to happen in our lives. In Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11, a very familiar verse comes out to us. It says this. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster. To give you a future and a hope. Now let me give you a little background of what, where, where Jeremiah is at and where the children of Israel are at when Jeremiah is writing this. They're getting ready to go into 70 years of exile and captivity in Babylon. Okay, does that sound like good plans? Jeremiah, for the first 28 chapters of this book, has been preaching to them, telling them to repent, telling them to get right with God, telling them to stop rebelling, telling them to stop worshiping idols, telling them 
to, to come and bow before the Lord your Maker, right? Telling them, hey, this is the way you need to go. This is the direction you guys need to go. And what happened is, that's why Jeremiah is the weeping prophet, because he continued to say this, and guess what? Nobody changed. Nobody changed. So now, here's Jeremiah declaring what God's plans is for Israel. This is the plans that God has for Israel. But because you've chosen to do it your way, guess what plans you get? Seven years of exile and captivity in Babylon. Wow, that doesn't sound very good, does it? And you know, it's, it's the same way in our lives. If we rebel... If we are, if we're disobedient, if we're worshiping idols, if we're doing, you know what we're going to do? We're going to miss the blessings of God. We're going to miss this coming to pass in our lives. This is what God wanted for Israel. This is what God intended for Israel. Is this what they got? No. Because of rebellion. Because of disobedience. Because they chose to go their own way. He has amazing plans for us. But life has to be done on his terms. Does that make anybody sad today? Because life on his terms can be hard sometimes. It can cause us to forfeit things that we may really take pleasure in. Right? Things that we may really want. The children of Israel weren't willing to forfeit those things. They're like, we like the pleasure that it brings to our flesh to rebel and to sin and to do our own thing. This is what we like. How many know God can't bless disobedience? God can't bless rebellion. He won't bless rebellion. See, they put themselves in this position because of rebellion and hardened hearts towards God. Hardened hearts. Refusing to listen to the message that would give them life. Right? Uh, refusing to listen to the message that would bring good and not disaster. Refusing to listen to the message that would give them a future and a hope. They refused. They denied God His plans for their life. Now, I know you may be thinking, well, this was written to Israel. It was. We've been grafted in, and we too, if we choose to live out God's plans in our lives, this can also be for us. Can it not? Yeah. This can also be for us. These can be the plans God has for us. If we choose to yield, we choose to surrender to His direction and His way. See, this is, this is what our plans look like. See, this is what our plans look like. You like this? Charlie, is this what you drew when you started building Brady's house? <laughs> a little house with a little sunshine and clouds in the sky, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's what our plans look like, right? <laughs> you know, that, that picture hanging on the fridge, okay? But this is what God's plans look like, okay? I've got a, another illustration. See, this is... This is a little more, a little more detailed, right? Okay, this, this was actually thought out. Okay, this, this wasn't done with a crayon. This, was, this, was, this is actually the plans for this church building. Okay, there's that second and third phase on this, if you didn't know that. But this is what happened. Okay, these are the plans that were laid, what were laid out. Now, once they laid out these plans... Once they drew these plans, once they had these plans made, could they just toss them to the side? No. They had to look at these plans more than once, right? More than twice. They had to look at these plans every day they were building. Before they started, they had to make sure they were getting the right measurements. They had to make sure they were doing the right things. They had to make sure they had, they had the right materials, right? Every day they had to do this. And you know what's awesome is if you follow this plan and you do what this says and you, you go ahead and measure and get the right materials and do all this, this is what you get, y'all. That's pretty nice, huh? This is 
is what you get. This is the end result. That's pretty nice, isn't it? But you know what? They had to follow the plan. They couldn't have got this if they wouldn't have followed the plan. Now, this was, this was obviously done before we merged, before we became Faith Chapel. But isn't this awesome that we have a new building? A new to us, anyway, right? 15 years old is pretty new in today's, today's standards. But it was all because someone followed the plan. Right? Next slide, please, man. You know, life has a plan, doesn't it? Life has instructions. Life has directions. This guy, phooey, why can't I get this thing together? Life, some assembly required, right? <laughs> why don't you try reading the instructions? What's she handing him there? A holy Bible. <coughs> Man, I told you, I'm telling you, this is the best instruction, direction, manual you can find right here. And it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will make your paths straight. Have you ever been in a place where you prolonged God's plans? Where it could have been a lot simpler. His plans could have happened, but because of rebellion, because of things that you chose to do, it just kind of pushed back God's plans. You delayed the plans of God in your life. You know, speaking of the children of Israel, let's look at them again. Let's use them as an example. You know what God's plan was when they left the, the land of Egypt? You know what God's plan was? To go into the land flowing with milk and honey to worship Him there. Right? That was God's plan. Okay, I'm going to take you out of captivity, out of bondage. I'm going to take you to a land flowing with milk and honey. And this is where you're going to be. And they got there in like three days, right? No. You know what happened? They started rebelling. They started complaining. They started sinning. They started worshiping idols. They started doing all these things. And what happened? They delayed. They prolonged the plan of God. Did they not? You know, so often... So often in our lives, we can prolong, we can push back, we can delay that plan that God wants to see happen in our lives. Why? Because of our own stubbornness. Why? Because of our own sin. Why? Because of our own rebellion. That is the reason why. Because we aren't willing to come and fall into God's way, God's plan. Right? We don't want to read the directions. In Psalm chapter 37, starting at verse 23, it says, The Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. Though they stumble, they will never fall. For the Lord holds them by the hand. Once I was young, and now I am old. Yet I have never seen the godly abandoned. Or their children begging for bread. Isn't that awesome? When I, it's, and I like this, it says, the Lord directs the steps of who? The godly. Okay, he can't direct the steps of the rebellious. Because the rebellious is too busy directing their own steps. The godly are the ones who's yielding and surrendering and saying, okay, God, I want to go your way. I want to go your direction. God, I want to do what you want me to do. How many has ever been in a position where you've been affected by someone not taking the direction of God? You've been influenced or affected by it. I think we can all say that, right? There's people that have rebelled, they've sinned, and because of their sin, because of their rebellion, it's affected my life now. And that's the thing. Here's the thing about it is when we choose to go our own direction, it doesn't just affect me. It affects everybody around me, doesn't it? I know if I were to go in my own direction after today, do you know who it would affect? It would affect me. It would affect my family. It would affect this church. It would affect this community. It would affect a lot of people, would it not? So we have to, we have to realize that if we want 
God to delight in every detail of our lives, we have to be willing to accept his direction. Right? I don't know about you, but I kind of like that. He delights in every detail of your lives. Talking about the godly. Talking about the ones that want to do it his way. He delights in every detail of their lives. I want God to delight in every detail of my life. What about you? Yeah, that's good news, isn't it? That's good news. But the way the Lord directs the steps of the godly is because godly people are submitting to his ways. <clears throat> but this doesn't happen without making each choice and taking each step to see it come to pass. Right? It's not just one choice. It's many choices along the way. It's not just one turn in the road. It's many turns to get to the right place, right? Okay, just, just sending you to, to 69, it would take you one turn, two turns, just to get on 69 North. Okay? It's many choices. If you say, you know what? I know he told me to turn twice, but I'm only going to turn once. <laughs> well, you're never going to get to Oakland Park. <laughs> All right, just want you to know. You see, and that's exactly, that's exactly what God has done. God has said, hey, I've got the best way to get where you want to go. But sometimes we say, you know what? I know God said do it this way, but I'm going to do it this way. And God is saying, well, you're never going to get there then, are you? Or you're, it's going to take a whole lot longer until you come to your senses and realize that my way is the best way, right? The next, next point is success means submission. How many of you think of success as monetary gain? If you do, you, I mean, in the spiritual world, if you do, you, you miss the boat. Okay? Yes, God can bless us in monetary ways. He can bless us with resources. He can bless us with those things. But success is not measured by how much we have. Amen? Amen. Amen. In Proverbs chapter 16, it says, We can make our own plans, but the Lord gives the right answer. Did you hear that? We can make our own plans, but the Lord gives the right answer. People may be pure in their own eyes, but the Lord examines their motives. Commit your actions to the Lord and your plans will succeed. So success is submission and obedience to the Lord Almighty. So if you want to be successful, I've just given you the, the formula for success. Man, it wasn't that good. Formula for success right here on a Sunday morning, January 3rd, 2016. You just received it. If you're not having success, it's, it, I, I've given it to you. It's, you know, it's in your hands now, right? It's in your hands. So here we are. God says, commit your action to the Lord and your plans will succeed. Now, it says your plans will succeed, but let me just explain this. If you're committing your actions to the Lord, guess whose plans you're going to do? It's not going to be your plans. It's going to be His plans. And you know what? He says, if you'll commit your, your actions to the Lord, your plans will succeed. So how many want your plans to succeed in 2016? Yes. How many want your plans to succeed in your life? Okay, beyond 2016. It only happens if we commit our actions, we commit our ways unto the Lord. Right? I know this sounds very elementary today, but I'm telling you, this is something that we all need to hear. Right? I need to hear this. I need to hear this because I think we, we miss the boat so often because we fail to commit our actions to the Lord. We go off and we do our own thing, and then we wonder why. We wonder why. God, why? Why is this why, why isn't this happening yet? Why is it? Well, it's because I'm doing it my own way. Now I'm not saying that you, you won't be following God's plan and it could take a little while for it to come to pass. Okay, that can happen too. Look at Joseph. Right? He stayed the path. He got sold into slavery. He got he got um, accused of trying to rape Potiphar's wife. But here he was, the plan that God had, the dream that he had given him. He was faithful to God through the whole thing, but it didn't just happen just like that, did it? But, he, but here's the thing about Joseph, is he stayed faithful to God throughout all those things. And that's how the plans of God. What if Joseph would have said, yeah, okay, you want to you 
sleep with me, Potiphar's wife, and so that's the only name they give for her, then I'm going to do it. If he would have done that, do you think his dream would have came to pass? If it did, it would have been prolonged for a lot longer, right? So it's not, it's not a perfect solution for your dreams to happen just like that. But I'm telling you, if you will follow God's path, God's plans will come to pass in your life. Proverbs 14, 12 says, There is a path before each person that seems right, but its end is death. You ever had one of those? You ever been at that fork in the road? That yeah, path seems right. I think I'm going to go over there. That seems pretty cool. Right? I think that path looks nice. I mean, look at all the green trees and the shrubbery around it. It's it's really pretty, right? And so you thought, man, that seems like the right way. And so you start walking down there, and about halfway down, you're like, all the green and all the shrubbery kind of starts going away, and everything starts looking dead, and you're like, ooh, I think I might have chosen the wrong path, right? Okay, and, that's, and we find ourselves in that place, and we're like, ooh, it seemed right at the time. You know, I, I'll tell you, if, if, if all we use is this, we're going to be deceived, y'all. We're going to be deceived. That's why we need direction. That's why we need the instructions of Almighty God, right? Because this isn't enough. God knew it wouldn't be enough. If all we use is just, oh, well, it just feels right in my heart. It just feels right in here. Okay? That's, that's not good enough. Okay? If it's not good enough that it feels right in here. It needs to feel right in here, Right? Okay? So we, we can't go by our feelings. There is a way that seems right, but it's, it ends in death. And then Proverbs chapter 3, we read some of it, but I want to read verse 7. It says, Don't be impressed with your own wisdom. Instead, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. How many have ever gotten impressed with their own wisdom? Like, man, yeah. I know where I'm going in life. I know what I'm going to do. I know how I'm going to get there. And man, we started going. We started doing. And man, so we got so lost, we didn't know what, what, what way was up or what way was down, right? We got so lost with Jesus. It's like, wow, how did I get here? Well, because you thought you were wise enough to go the right way. You thought you were wise enough. You thought you had the wisdom that you needed without asking God. And I, I know, we all have a way we like to do things, right? We all have a way. Whether it's the right way or not, we all have a way. Sometimes it's the wrong way, but we all have a way. We have a way that we think we know is right. We have ways that we do things that we have always done it, and it may not be right. How do you, how do you know that? Maybe you've been doing things, you know, like, man, I've always done it this way. Yeah, and where's it getting you? Where is it getting you? Just because you've always done it that way doesn't mean it's right. Okay? Just because these ma they still make these masks and supply them in the, in the um, gas stations doesn't mean this is the best way, right? This isn't the best way anymore. Maybe it is for you. Maybe you're like, well, I don't know the electronics. I'm just not into that. Well, and maybe you're like, well, my phone ain't that smart, right? <laughs> so I've got to use one of these. <laughs> But I'm telling you, just because we've always done it that way. Okay, God is a God is a God of change, isn't he? God is a God of, of the best plans, right? God is constantly wanting to change us. He's constantly got us on the on the spinning wheel, shaping us and molding us and, and trying to change us and make us exactly what he wants wants us to be. But in order for this, in order for his plans to happen. We must come, come under His authority. His authority. How many like the word submission? How many like that word? Wait a minute. That means I can't do whatever I want when I want? No. I don't like it. And I know women, they get a double win. They need to submit to God and to their husband, right? Ooh, man. Y'all got it bad, didn't you? <laughs> But actually, it's really good, right? Because it's the plan of God. Okay, I know, I know it's not always comfortable. I know it's not always right. But man, I'm telling you, it's the plan of God and it works. 
Right? It's tried and true. It's been working for lots and lots of years. God wrote it. It's good. Right? Now remember, man, don't, don't think you're off the hook. You know, the Bible does say to love your wife as Christ loved the church. Okay? You remember he died for us. Okay? That's how you're supposed to love her. And if you do that, you're going to make it real easy for her to submit. Okay? Just want you to say, man. I just want to say, man. Okay? If you will love your wife as Christ loved the church, you're going to make it real easy for her. And you all want to make it easy on your wives, don't you? Amen. Amen. Come on, man. I need an amen. <laughs> all right. <laughs> you already got uh, it. <laughs> but you know, sometimes we are so impressed with our logic, our knowledge, our reasoning, that we put that in the front seat of our lives. We put that in the driver's seat of our lives. And we put God in the back. Say, oh God, you can sit back here today. I got this figured out. Now again, again, I know not intentionally we wouldn't go out there and say, God, I don't want you to be in the driver's seat today. But unintentionally, right? We're not even thinking about it. And we throw God in the back seat and we say, God, I'm driving today. That's not God's plan for you. God's plan is to be in the driver's seat. You know, there's a, there's a bumper sticker that I really don't like at all. It says, God is my co-pilot. You know what? If God's your co-pilot, it's time to switch seats. Okay? It's time to, it's time to let him get in the, in the pilot's seat and let him take you where he wants you to go. Amen? So, Jesus has a plan for you. Do you believe it yet? John chapter 10, verse 10, it says, The thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. But my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying and abundant life. Which plan do you like better? We throw up that, that middle slide, one of those mid slides that talks about God has a plan for us and the enemy has a plan for us. Can you do that for me, Brandon? It may take a second, but if you can. You know, the, the enemy has a plan for our lives as well, doesn't he? The enemy, the enemy's plans, this is how they end. You either get, you're going to be stolen from, you're going to be destroyed, and then eventually you're just going to be killed. Right? It's just going to kill you. Alright? God has a plan for your life. The enemy has a plan for your life. Be ready for both. Just be wise enough to know which one to battle and which one to embrace. Amen? God wants to give us a full and abundant life. But... If you'll notice in the rest of the chapter, he talks about him being the shepherd and us being the sheep. Right? He gets to be the shepherd. He gets to be the big dog. He gets to be that guy. We get to be the sheep that follows the shepherd around. Isn't that good? And that's how you get that abundant life. That's how you get it, right? That's how you get it. That's what Jesus is saying. Hey, I've come. I'm telling you, there's a wolf out here, and he's out to steal, kill, and destroy from you. But if you'll follow my direction, you'll follow my way, I'm here to give you life. And a rich, satisfying life, that is. So we must come under the authority of the Good Shepherd, who is Jesus Christ. So, as we wrap up here this morning, God has given us in detail His plans. And his way for life in different areas of our lives. And next week, we'll begin to dissect all those through Scripture. Many, many plans. Many, many ways. I would encourage you, if you have any people that you don't know, know the Lord. Invite them next week. Because God's got a plan for them too. Amen? But I want to wrap up with this this morning, church. It's found in Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter, you're not going to see it up here because I, this is, God spoke this to me this morning and I didn't have a chance to get it on the slides. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 says, For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus. We can do the good things He planned so, so we can do the good things He planned for us long ago. Did you hear that? 
We are God's masterpiece. You're God's masterpiece. Isn't that amazing? Is that amazing? But you're God's masterpiece. God put some thought into you. God cared about what he was making when he made you. You're his masterpiece. He's created you anew in Christ Jesus. Why? Why has he created you anew in Christ Jesus? So we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. That's why. He has made you new in Christ Jesus so you can do the good things he's planned for you. See, God's always had good plans for you. Always. His plans have always been the same. To give you that future, to give you that hope, to give you abundant life, to give you a rich, satisfying life. It's always been that way. His plans have always been the same for you. He wants those things for you. It's us that mess it up, right? It's us that get in the way of seeing God's plans come to pass in our lives. So I ask you this this morning. Do you trust God? Do you trust God to where you're willing to say, you know what, God? I'm going to take your direction. Today's a new day. It's a new year. Lord, I want to walk in the direction of Almighty God. I want to fulfill your plans for my life. You see, we're starting a journey. Starting a journey here, church. To see and realize the great plans God has for our lives. And I'm telling you, they're amazing. I've been studying this, and I'm telling you, they are amazing. Now, this is gonna this is gonna be for the church. This is gonna be for each individual in the church. But there's also gonna be some work to be done by you. Because I believe God has a, a specific plan for each and every individual. Something God wants you to do. Okay? God called me to be a pastor. I'm thankful for that. God called Kenny to be a worship leader. He's thankful for that. So God has a place for us. God may have called you to be an evangelist. Now that doesn't mean you have to, you have to put on a suit and tie and go tell. No, you just stand out on the street and just tell people about Jesus. I don't know what God has specifically called you to, but I'm telling you, God has a specific plan just for you. When was the last time you sought God to find out what that plan was? Who's been drifting this today? Who's been drifting into 2016 hoping that somehow something would just pop up? God is an intentional God, so we need to be intentional people. Amen? So it's up to you. Seek the Lord to know His specific plan for your life. Why? So you can live it out. I told my kids the other night, I said, I, I told Canaan, I said, Canaan, God has given you the gift to play the drums. And it's not anything else. You can't take credit for it. God has gifted you. My wife told me, he's already passed me up as far as talent goes. He can do more than I can. So I, I reinforced that last night. I said, Canaan, God has given you this gift. There is a purpose for you playing the drums so you can bring glory to Him. We don't understand. We don't know what it is God is going to bring before us and say, okay, this. And sometimes when you bring something, it could mean sacrifice. It could mean giving something up. It could mean lacking for a, a time in things that you really want, right? But I'm telling you, you will never find a more fulfilling life than the life lived for Jesus Christ and doing what you, what you were God, what God made you to do. Amen? It's good, I'm telling y'all. I don't work a day in my life. Not because I'm lazy, because I love what I do. This is what God has called me to do. I'm fulfilling God's purpose for my life. This is it. So, church, I ask you today, 
Whose plan are you wanting to follow? Maybe, you fall, maybe you've been following your plan and you're thinking, man, I really need to hear this today. Because I'll tell you what, right now my plan hasn't been working. I've fallen on my face. Both my knees are all skinned up. I don't even know what to do. I don't even know which way is up right now. But you know, that's the awesome thing about God is He doesn't He doesn't hold it against us if we come with a repentant heart. Right? If we'll come this morning, we'll say, God, yeah, God, I've been doing my own thing. But you got to admit it. You can't come down here and be like, God, I've, I've been doing my own thing, but. Okay, you know what a but is? It means I never said what I said before that. Right? Okay, basically you're just wiping out everything you just said. No, when you come down and you, you don't use buts with God, you say, God, I've been doing it my own way and I was wrong. And what I don't want to be wrong anymore. I want to be right in your sight. I want to do, God, what your plan is for my life. Stand with me this morning. I'm confident that every individual here has a plan. Has God, God has a plan for him. He has an overarching plan for every believer, but he also has a specific plan for every single individual. And it's good. It's really good. But the only way that God's plans can come to pass is if you're willing to surrender. You're willing to give up. You're your desires and embrace his desires. Now maybe you're doing what God has, has planned for you. Maybe you're in the position where God has called you because I want you to understand we need Christians in the workforce, y'all. We need Christians in the workforce. You have been gifted to do your job. Which we're going to get into that later. So I'm not saying every plan consists of a ministry position inside of a church. But I'm telling you this, every plan consists of you being a minister. We all are in ministry. We all get to do ministry. We all get to be a voice for the Holy Spirit. We all get to be an example of what Jesus Christ is. So here we are, church. How have your plans been going? Are you ready to surrender if your plans weren't God's plans? I know some of you may be thinking, man, I, I want that. I want that good and not disaster. I want that future and I want that hope. I want what God intended for me. going to ask you, if that's you, if you're ready to surrender, you're ready to say, God, it's not, it's not about me. It's not about my plans. But it's about your plans. If you're ready to surrender today, you're ready to yield, you're ready to say, God, I'm ready to repent of falling my own way. Then I want you to come, I want you to find a place at the altar. I want you to find a place to come before God and say, God, my way is not the best way. God, your way is the best way. Come on, church. So don't miss this opportunity to give God what you once had so that he can give you what he wants you to have. The word declares, the word declares this. When we come to him, Old things pass away. Behold, all things can become new. All things can become new today. Do you want newness in your life or do you want the same old, same old? It's your choice. It's up to you. The altars are open. Let's make this house a house of prayer. Let's seek the face of God. Let's ask Him what He would want for our lives and lay our lives down before Him.